All right, so in today's session, we will talk about factory IO because yesterday I have a request from one student to know how to use factory IO effectively because many a times uh, people are, uh, students are struggling to link the conveyors and sensors all together. So I will just explain you how, what is the best way to link all these, uh, uh, these libraries in your automation sandbox. And we will see how to make use of digital and analog features in the conveyors, all right? So let's start with the very basic thing we always do in the factory. I, when I start, I use the conveyors. So I will take this conveyor six meter. Now before coming to these uh, libraries on the right side, you have to check which camera you want to operate. This is very important because if I choose, if I choose fly camera, you know, and if you scroll up and scroll down your mouse, that's the scroll key, right? It will move like that, up and down. This is a fly camera. But otherwise, if you check another camera, this one, it's an orbit camera, because many people have habit to use the scroll key for zoom in and zoom out. So if I use this one, and now if I zoom in, zoom out, it will act like this. Zoom in and zoom out. So it's, it's it's very important because it's very annoying when you're working with the working with the sensors and actuators. You want to link it on the conveyor. This gets very annoyed that oh why it's moving so fast. So you have to choose which one you like the most, and then you can see which one is better. Okay. So I personally like to have a fly camera, this one, because this will enable me to move up and down like this. And I can use my keyboard keys, W and S, for zoom in and zoom out. This is more like what we do in games. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a gamer. I play games all the time. And this is my most uh, uh, optimized settings in playing games. So I'm used to it. So select which camera you like the most. I prefer you fly camera. And then I will take one conveyor coming here. Okay, so that's my conveyor four meter roller conveyor. Now the best feature about factory IO is these conveyors are already pre-designed. You don't have to design the conveyor. You don't have to define the length, width, which motor. This is all predefined here on the right side. Okay, so what you do is when you have this conveyor here, now, right now, I don't have any equipment here. So this is conveyor is standalone. I don't, have, I don't have to worry about. But if you have another conveyor and you want to link to this conveyor, so for example, I take another four meter. So I have to make sure that this is aligned. Now you can see I'm moving very easily with my mouse, zoom in and zoom out, and you have to align it, okay? Align it to make sure this is connected, like this. So now this conveyors are connected, okay? It's not that tough, it's pretty easy. It's all you have to do, how to move your hands and the keyboard, and especially with this buttons and to move up and down. So that's, that's uh, more about it. Okay, let me just get back to comments. What's today's session about? Today's session is about how to use factory IO effectively and how to link it with Siemens PLC using Siemens driver and how you can also simulate it without a PLC. We will see that. Okay, and okay, everybody, hi, welcome to today's session. I knew you were a gamer. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Well, oh, sorry about that. Spyware. Oh, no problem. Okay, so this was about conveyor. Now, my special request was from yesterday. There was a student who wants to know about how did I create the environment for recipes. If you remember, we have a session on recipes in Factory IO and Siemens, and he especially wants to know how did I create that. So it's very easy, and uh, this session is especially about that. So I'll delete these two conveyors, and I will just open that photo which I created yesterday and because I need to refer that recipe environment and then I will create it. The same picture I posted in NFI group was on the recipe environment. All right, so what we have, in this we have two conveyors. So I will take two conveyors, one is six meter and another is six meter here, okay? Although this is the environment which you will all also find if you go to file, if you go to open, and if you go to scenes and I choose that environment from, oh, where is that? Here, assembler. I, I actually use this one. So you can just open that one or you can make your own, okay? So, okay, let's do one thing. I will open this one and I will modify it to my environment. 
So if you're watching it, the student who requested this lesson yesterday, this is what you have to do. Just open this environment. Now what I had done here is I put two vision sensors here. So just telling you how to put the vision sensors in any environment and how to take care of the mechanics. Okay, so if we go to the sensors here, the best part is we have vision sensor and vision sensor judge on monitors. This is a vision sensor. It monitors the QR code, which is on the boxes. So I will take out one sensor here. And very important thing. Now, if you see here, this is the this is how the sensor is located, placed here. If I click click the keyboard key V, you know, vertical, and then I try to pull it up, then it will be vertically moved, right? Like this. If I don't press the V, then it will be horizontally moved. So these are the axes. So by default, this is on horizontal axis. To press V, and then it will be vertical axis. Okay. This is how you have to make sure where you have to place your components because the axes are very important. So I click V, bring it up, bring it inside here. Okay. So the camera, now it, it depends upon you where you want the camera to sense the object. You can do it when the object is being aligned here. Okay. So let's take an example. I take out a box. Okay. And I'm going to run a conveyor. The conveyor is coming. Now the sensor, okay, let's stop the conveyor. Now the sensor is here. I can throw it out. And let's see what the sensor says about this object. So vision sensor is here, but it is not sensing the object. Probably it's too high. Okay. One more time. Now it's on and I need to check its <clears throat> output. Okay. Well, there is one bug in the software, which I think it's a bug because when you are in this fly camera and you want to check the characteristics of the sensor and when you right click on it, that you can see the mouse moves away. Okay. This is a bug. So what you do is go to this orbit camera and right click. And then you can see this, um, this window and go to configuration. And this is right now configured. Let me go here again. This is configured for blue base which means this is configured for digital output. If it has a blue base, it will give you the output. This is pre-programmed. This is in the software. But what I want is I want all ID. Okay. When I click on all ID, it means it will give you an ID of each boxes. Let's see that now. So my conveyor is running and uh, where is base conveyor? And, and then I stop it here. Vision sensor is here. You can see the ID is 83. Okay. This is the ID probably coming from this QR code, which is, this is what they have written in the boxes. I have worked on this vision sensors in my current project, and we are using this sensor to find out whether the object is cube or it's, or it's a, a cylinder or it's having some things inside. And that's what we also do. This is a nice software. We also find out the dimensions of the object. And then we find out whether it's a cube or it's a cylinder. And we also give an ID. For example, we generate a code and we give the output from the sensor that if it's ID one, we know it's square or a cube. If it's ID two, if it's, it's a cylinder. Okay. That's what we also do in the real life. So this software vision sensor, the output 83, you can consider this is what machine vision people do when they configure the sensors of this vision sensor, and they will give you just the ID and you have to take care of, okay, now what to do with the ID. So let's see the next, next box. And the next box will probably come if I go to my, if I go to my base emitter and I want to emit different boxes, not just the blue, let's have everything. No, okay, not this one. Green and yeah. Now we have six types of objects coming from here. So I will go back and start. Let's do one thing. Let's raise this guy. I will going to raise it so that I just start the conveyor. And now you can see the vision sensor output. 
it's you can see this is a green box 89 again blue base this is 90 this is blue top and this is 91 this is green base and 92 so we have different we have different output coming from different objects because of the vision sensor coming back to your comments okay pretty much thank you for newcomers thank you for joining <laughs> so all right so this is a different boxes coming so this was the question about how to put the sensors now you might notice that if you put the sensor hanging like this 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 looks stupid you know <laughs> this is not a good way to show the sensor hanging in the air so what you do is you go here suppose you are demonstrating this project to your teachers professors or someone so you take out this bracket take out this bracket use the v bring it top take it inside and carefully place it such that it's, it should not obstruct the sensor it should not obstruct any other object so this is the right way now i have to fix this camera on this bracket what do i do make sure you are you are on this fly camera click on this take it up and then drag it here so now this looks very nice okay the sensor is here and it is sensing the base if you want you can bring it down so i'm using v again bring it down bring it down as well so that it is on the good range of the objects so this is how you can have one sensor and a bracket here this is what i did in my recipe program second thing is very important if you want the same feature here so the best way is to copy it or duplicate it because if you do it again with a sensor and a bracket out, it's boring so what you do is select the select this one and press control and select the bracket now you will see this this formation of this cube here it means two objects are selected then right click okay right click doesn't work sometime so click group this is group now again right click and duplicate so now you have another group duplicated bring it here next to the conveyor and drop it so now you have two brackets two cameras located on two conveyors so i hope this was what i did before when i was talking to that student so if you're watching this lesson this is how you do it okay and one more thing if you want this whole environment it's very easy just select like this everything is selected right click duplicate you have another station and then you duplicate to have more multiple stations is it this this is really cool i love this i love this feature so this was about how you get your designer how you get your design in the automation studio it doesn't matter it's a big place in this automation sandbox you can use as much place you want okay now comes the second part the second part is how to use these uh, these elements using your PLC software. Now for that, I must say you that make sure this is not forced unless you want it. Because if it is forced, you cannot control it using your PLC. So you have to make well, you have to make sure nothing is forced. So I'm releasing the forces. Okay. Now the important thing is you go to file, go to drivers. Now in drivers these are the available drivers you have in the software now it depends which license you have the one i'm using is the ultimate license so i have all the drivers so here you have advantage usb 4704 4750 this is a uh, this is from the company Advantech. This is a USB card, and this card will allow you to link to any PLCs. If your PLC is not linked here, and if your PLC does not have a Modbus interface, no Ethernet port, you can use this one to link your PLC. So when I click this one, you have this device. So if you have this device with you connected to your laptop, you can connect it. And then you just wire your inputs and outputs to this device. You just wire it. So this is how you can use 4750. If you need more details, you can go to the website of uh, Factory IO and they have documentation on it. But today what I'm going to teach you is, what I'm going to tell you is, not teach you, <laughs> you're already uh, experts. I'm going to tell you how to link Siemens at 71200 and 1500 in that, okay? So I have a Siemens PLC and this is the TIA. I have PLC in my table, you cannot see it, but I have it here. 
So in the Siemens PLC, uh, what you have to do is first go to your environment and go to configuration. And that's the configuration. Now you have to put the host address or before that you select your PLC. Now this driver has 1200 and 1500 because I selected this one. My PLC is 1200. Select this one and enter the host address. Now the host address is your PLC IP address, IP address of your PLC. So in this case, I'm going to put 192.168 because I know my IP address of PLC 1.102. That's my PLC IP address. You have to put there and the network adopter, which uh, Ethernet card you have, you have to select here the mine minus killer. And now this is the offset of IO points. I will come back to that later. So just just let it be default. So now go back and try to connect. So my PLC was in the right IP address, so it is connected. So it is connected. I go back to my TIA. I open my PLC from here and make a sample logic. So I go to program block, go to main block. You can, you can have the structure by going to project, new, select your PLC, and you come here. All right, this is my input and that's my output. Perfect. So I just download this logic in my PLC and my input is I0.0, .0 output is Q0.0. .0. It's the first input and first output. So once you download this in your PLC, you can go online to check if everything is okay. I go online and okay. That's my input and that's my output. Go back to factory IO. Now I will just take one conveyor out of these probably probably this conveyor so let me see what's this conveyor what is the name belt conveyor conveyor 4m4 okay i go to my driver and then okay i already have so many things connected i don't want that uh i have to do like this probably okay i take it out all my outputs i have just one output so belt conveyor 4 m4 this is my output okay now very important if you see here these are the inputs okay which are the default inputs in your card now it's very important for you to understand because when you work with factory io and siemens together with a plc you will fail some uh, fail some face some errors <laughs> so what you do is the first input is i0.0 .0, and you know that this i0.0 .0 is your hardware input okay this is the hardware input on the plc so if you use this hardware input here you will be in a trouble because this is also coming from let's say diffuse sensor 4 and this is also coming from the switch on the plc so you need some offset to have an offset what you do is Go to configuration and put the offset here. This is the offset, I put 10, okay? Output, uh, you can also do it if you want, but it's okay, output doesn't matter. If you're not using your PLC for any other purpose, you can make it zero. So go back, now you see it's 10.0, okay? But here it's Q0.0, .0. so I open my T, okay, let's readjust it. Now I will run my output. Mm -mm -mm. okay i hope it's visible so this is my input and i'm going to my trainer to turn on the output okay pretty far <laughs> so that's my output input which is on and you can see output is on and this belt conveyor is on so now i'm using my hardware button on the plc to run the belt if you want to see where's the belt let's see that here go to play and you see the belt is running. Okay, let's bring this guy up. Yeah, now the belt is running. Okay, if I turn off the switch from my hardware PLC. Oh, where is that? Mm. This is off. Because this bit is off. This is on, this is running, this is off, this is off. So I am linking my real PLC with the factory I.O. The steps were very simple. Just put the IP address in factory IO and give some 
give some offset that's very important in the drivers configuration give the offset the offset is very good because now if i want to run this conveyor from switch here which is here this is start button 2 start button 2 i go to driver and i will take this button here which is i10.0 so i have this button at i10.0 okay now i will just take an or logic in the bottom and connect it to my input so i will write i10.0 now i know that in my plc s7 1200 i just have eight inputs so my input is i0.0 to i0.8 or i0.7 actually so this i10.0 i don't have hardware inputs so i'm using my software inputs that's pretty amazing so i'll just download my logic again load it will take a couple of seconds now if you see this this contact will come from here and the conveyor is running okay and this contact is coming from a hardware input here okay if you can't see i'm doing some buttons <laughs> if you trust me and this one is from this button okay so that's how you link your virtual inputs to the conveyors and hardware inputs or hardware switches also to the conveyor okay i hope this is interesting and this was how you linked your plc with the real plc with your factory io now let's check another option and then we are done then i will come back to your questions i will come back to your questions uh just give me a few few seconds now i will select s7 plc sim now plc sim in plc sim is for the people who don't have a plc but those who has the software very important so all i have to do is turn off the online and go to online simulation and start that's how you start the simulation when you have simulation running then you don't need to care about the ip addresses anymore because you are in a simulation so simulation is uh, getting on and here okay one important thing when you are running on the simulation now the important thing is how siemens tia knows the factory io how to link it together what's what's the procedure what's the logic behind it the logic is this piece of code here if you notice mhj plc lab function so let me download my logic first to my virtual plc that i'll show you this logic start search now this is selected at plc sim because of we are using plc simulator this is the virtual load and i'm going to download my configuration to my plc now okay everything looks fine just load it start all and finish so we have the simulation here and now i go online okay once again compiling okay simulation is running and here it's running again but now if i actuate my input from the hardware it will not work so it's not working i'm doing it because it's in the simulation mode so i have to i have to make sure this is running from my environment and now for that to link factory io with plc you need this code now this is the code which the company real games has designed and you can just use this code in your program how to do it they have this code in their website and uh, in their website if you go to factory io documentation you will find this standardized code if you don't have it have it you can write to me and i can give it to you so you have this fb group fb block here you just have to do is go to network go offline now if you notice here i click connect it will not connect with plc's because this code i'm not using in the main logic so i will go offline and i want to use this code in the first network okay i need a network above Oh, how do I do a network above? I never tried it. 
anyways I will bring this network try to bring it above no yeah like this so network one is empty bring it to the top here so this is the code now download it again in your Siemens simulator wait a second this should be downloaded load finish and go online and connect again you can see this is connected now all right everything is working now I again use my first input which was start button 2 here and my first conveyor which was 4M4 all right so let's go online we are online I want this monitoring mode here okay now I go back and I go back here now this is running I will just press this button oh, wait okay I have to I have to check again with with the offsets because this is very important I told you this is the this should not conflict with their software and hardware inputs click 10 and I go back go back again play now you can see the conveyor is running and your i10.0 is on here okay with no problems so this is now running without a plc just the simulator so thank you guys this was all about how to use factory io with simulator and without simulator let me see if you have some important queries then i will end the session okay mm. hello everybody how vision sensor works uh well it's quite complicated to explain without the software but what I can tell you some basics about how vision sensor works what is this guy doing here what's the what's the magic he's doing here so in the image uh, vision sensor the basic idea is to know about the pixels because the image is all about pixels and we break down the pixels the colored pixels into zero and one because you know uh, what should I do notepad maybe yeah because you know the pixel in binary we have the value 0 and 255 and 0 is for black and 255 is for white pixel okay black pixel and white pixel so the basic idea is suppose if you have let me run this conveyor where is that guy let's have an object under yeah let's see this object now this is a blue object now you will say okay how do I get black and white it's blue but what we do is we make some thresholds if you know this keyword threshold and we define an area of a blue threshold if this color lies in this threshold we have a bit which is true or false okay because you know that the blue color has its own RGB range oh there are so many things so many basic things <laughs> but I can just give you an idea we have an RGB range red blue, red green and blue and there is one more range um, which was V uh, as far as I remember H and H value hue and saturation yeah this is VHS or HSV generally we call it HSV in a sequence and this is hue if you know the hue saturation is the color oh sorry and then you have saturation value okay these three values we use generally in the sensors vision sensors we don't use RGB we use these value but if you are wondering how to get these value of the color just go to any website in the Google type HSV values for a blue color or some ranges you will get a lot of ranges so you have a threshold and you define it in the camera if your blue color or the color of the object lies in this threshold you get a bit so when you have a bit you know the object is blue and these ranges these ranges varies for different colors for blue it will be different for green it will be different so if the next object is green you have a different bit different threshold 
and then you have a different values okay this is for green and this is about the color how do how do i find the color <laughs> there are many things so first we also define the color color of the object based on thresholds second thing is we defined we define whether the object is square or cube or cylindrical that is defined based on its edges okay its edges so what we do is we define some coordinates okay default coordinate and it's very important that once the camera is installed like here it should not be moved if you move the camera you will screw all your programming because it's very important the positioning of camera is important because we define the coordinates on the object so we define the coordinates like here and here we define the coordinates and then we define okay this is my coordinates and to define the coordinates it's also very important that sometimes the object is not like this sometimes the object is here or it's here or it's it's in a different appropriate shape right so how to fix the coordinates that's again depends upon the edge of your object if you have a transition of black to green this you define in the camera software you will find an edge and then you define the coordinates and when you have the coordinates you define the another edge and then you find the distance between these two edges and then you get dimension of the pixel and then you calibrate this dimension of pixels into the length of the object and once you have the dimensions of the object you will find which object it is so quite complicated uh, but it can also be more easy uh, if i explain you with the software probably in further future ses sessions i might tell you how to work with image image recognition with the plz so this was the question by Shub, shubham i hope you got the answer thanks sir please start in hindi also uh probably i i'm working on hindi lessons uh, you will get to know about it very soon yeah i'm working on it great job sirs but i'm beginner so i'm unable to understand this completely ajay giri this is not a basic session this was the session for a uh, little bit people who already know plcs yeah so if you want to learn the basics go to my website go to our nfi website join the basic courses or go to my youtube join the basic lessons and then you approach step by step can synchronize the software with plc yes i just did that uh, i hope you can check it before what i did so how can i join session huh? how can you join session you are already in the session what do you mean by it keep the session on your channel so that we can download it later oh don't download the later <laughs> don't download my videos my videos are available on the youtube for lifetime but uh, downloading is doesn't sound good but you can check it it will be uploaded in the youtube channel <laughs> Hello, sir. You are great. Thank you. Please upload a video on communication protocol of AB Siemens Delta PLC. Well, I have a video on Delta uh, Modbus communication. It's in the channel. I have a video on Siemens, but that is not in the channel. That is in the paid course. You have to join Siemens course. Protocols of AB. I don't know what you mean by protocols, but we have Ethernet based communication with Alan Bradley. That is in my course, Learn 5 PLC in a Day. You can check it in the NFI website. For Delta, I have explained in the YouTube. Siemens is also in the Siemens course. Thanks, Raj. The offset answer my question. You're welcome. Interesting, sir. You always best said Dave Sharma, your student from India. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, said Dave. So how to get this code? Oh, to get this code, uh, what I'll do is I will put this code in, uh, in the description after I end this session and you can get a link. You can download that. Uh, how to simulate Alan Bradley without real PLC? Very good question. If you notice here in the drivers, we do not have Alan Bradley like we have PLC sim, but we don't have simulator. So I'm sorry, it's not possible to do without PLC. But I'm I'm sure this team is working and they will have a soon a new update. And you can also use a PLC simulator for Alan Bradley, which was RS emulator. And you can link it with Factory Out. This might come in future, but it's not there as of now. Uh, do you have to set an offset in S7 PLC configuration? Okay, very good question. Uh, I don't know this guy named Dom D. You can do the offset either in Factory IO or in PLC. That's the that's your choice 
The difference is, if you offset in factory I.O., you're offsetting the inputs of factory I.O. Okay, for example, this starts from I10.0 because I offset in factory I.O. So I don't have to worry about what's happening in the PLC because my PLC outputs are only 0 0.7, up to 0 0.7. So this I find quite easy because it's quite easy. You just go to configuration, put the offset, really easy. But if you do it in PLC, it's a bit uh, for people, for beginners stuff to find out, but you go to device configuration and I will go offline first. Click your PLC and click the properties. And you have the properties here. Now you go to digital inputs, IO addresses. And here you give the input addresses for your inputs. So right now it's at zero. Okay, it means my input starts from I0.0 .0 in PLC. If I put 10 here, uh, and I will rewire the tags with the new address. If I put 10, now I'm again in a problem because now my hardware hardware inputs from the switches starts from 10.0. And this is from also from 10.0. It clashes, okay? So either make one 10, another zero, or this 10, another zero. Don't do it together. So I'll just go back to zero because I don't want to change my PLC hardware addresses because my PLC hardware uh, tags are on my PLC, so it doesn't make sense. I don't have tag, I can change the tags in software, but on the hardware, it's tough. So I prefer you to make offset in the software itself, not on the hardware, okay? I hope that answered your question. All right, so thank you so much for watching, and if you have any other questions, just write a comment, I'll get back to you, and I hope you like the session, and I wish you good life, <laughs> and have a nice Sunday. Enjoy your day. Ciao.